Hi, I'm excited. It's calculator review time. I haven't done one of those in a long time. Um, have I ever done a calculator review? Who cares? I'm doing a calculator review. Um, you know, I love Casio calculators. Yes, this one in the middle here is a Tandy, but it's just all the Tandy calculators are rebadged Casios. And these two are pre-VPAM. So these are the traditional algebraic entry uh, calculators. This newfangled one, the Casio FXR991EX, um, which is an absolutely awesome calculator, but uses the VPAM rubbish, the visually perfect algebraic method which is quite all right if you've got a formula. I do actually like VPAM if you have a formula that you want to solve and enter it in uh, to see that you're actually solving a formula. But for everyday calculations, I much prefer the traditional algebraic entry uh, Casio calculators like this. But the problem with these is that they're actually quite big. I mean, look at the modern ones. Sure, it's got a full line display and everything else. Sometimes I just want a small form factor calculator. That's why I also have this beautiful little Casio FX260 solar calculator. Let's have a look at it here in terms of uh, size, and it really is um, quite, you know, significantly smaller. Yes, it misses an extra uh, row of function buttons on here, but more than makes up for it in size. And this is your traditional algebraic entry one. Unfortunately, they discontinued this uh, quite some time back, and I thought there wasn't a replacement at all. And um, I love this little beast. It's great. But I just realized they've got a new one. Look, they've released the FX260 Solar 2. Oh, I can't believe it. Brand spanking new. All of like, I believe, $8.99 US retail price. Um, your mileage may vary. It was much more expensive to get this here in Australia. <laughs> Very expensive, actually, compared to the uh, US retail price. But I had no idea that they actually redid this one in the new form factor, as we'll uh, take a look at. But it's an ident it's the identical calculator. So let's go and have a look at the differences between the 260 Solar and the brand spanking new. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Beautiful. The FX260 Solar 2. Also ridiculously confusingly known as the FX82 Solar 2. Um, in Europe, but in America and a lot of other places, it's FX260 Solar 2, just like the original. Why they like put the FX82? Because, well, that's the original model. They're trying to get brand mileage out of that. Anyway, the new one comes in with a uh, new hard case, just like all the new brand new Casios. There we go. I don't particularly like the white. Not a fanboy of the white at all. Jeez, that's causing exposure on my camera to go absolutely crazy. Anyway, um, yeah, it's got the new style, um, sort of like, let's take a look at it. It's kind of like this kind of, uh, it, it does have a nice feel to it, kind of like a textured, uh, sort of, you know, metallic type feel. This one, not quite as good as the FX991 here. All right, close up shot of that for you texture fanboys. You can. Yeah, you can see it. Look at that. Oh, Bobby Dazzler. Well, you either like it or you don't. Oh, look at that. That just reminds me of like a Cubit <laughs> game board. But uh, yeah, it's got the new look. It's got the new uh, font on the keys. Look at this. They've changed the uh, font uh, entirely between the two. Whether or not it's more readable, I don't know. I, I personally think the original 260 uh, Solar um, has more readable, like the orange on there, the orange uh, secondary shift function designators are much easier to read than the ones on the new one. That's just my take on that anyway. Yeah, I can see that on camera. Yeah, it's about what it looks like in uh, real life. But apart from that, it's basically an identical calculator. Size-wise, it's a little bit, little bit wider. Not happy with that. Not happy, Jan. But length-wise, um, it's actually a little bit uh, shorter. So it makes up for that. And it's maybe a little bit thicker as well. But apart from that, look at the key layout. It is absolutely identical to the original. Fantastic. And they've gone from your traditional rubber keys like this on the old school ones to this new, the newfangled uh, plastic keys. And they've even added a bit of roundy on there. Look at that round and round. Bit of wankery happening there. But uh, anyway, um, whether or not, like, 
Is there a difference in the plastic keys? Yeah, they feel different. Oh, like it's totally personal preference. Um, maybe the newer ones like a bit feels a bit better, but uh, it makes more noise. Like the plastic. I'm not sure if you can hear that when you're banging it. Whereas the rubber one is more silent. So if you're trying to do some stealthy calculations, then the old school rubber one's a bit better than the newfangled plastic. But anyway, it is a decent feel and I haven't missed any uh, keys on this yet as much as I try. So as I said, the great thing about this is just simply the size. It is like truly pocketable. You can actually whack it in your pocket, take it around in your lab coat, and it's a Bobby Dazzler for just, you know, a little on-the-fly calculations. And no, I'm not going to use my freaking newfangled smartphone bullshit. Can't beat a new a proper calculator. So as you can see, like, the functionality is absolutely identical, but I will say they do actually sell a version of this called the FX260 Solar 2 NF, and the NF stands for no fraction, and they literally just, like, tape blank out the fraction key over here. Doesn't have an ability to display fractions. And obviously there's a market of uh, fraction haters out there, but no, these are all driven by uh, school requirements, you know, specific courses and uh, uh, things like that, you know, the education departments have requirements you can't use a calculator. Oh, well, you can, but it can't have fraction capability. So, yeah, they just did a model that actually uh, removed that. It's very common in the market. They've been doing it for know, 40 years. But the biggest difference is in the display. Look at the size difference. Look at this bad boy. I love it. The decimal points really are uh, displayable. And in terms of uh, uh, readability at different angles, it's actually better. It's better. Ah, oh, yeah, I don't, well, careful of the light, yeah, but that's a beautifully readable uh, traditional reflective display. I love it, fantastic. But I've got to admit, there are some people who don't prefer the taller digits like this, and I'm kind of one of them. I do prefer the uh, squatter ones like that, but considering it's got the larger display and it's uh, kind of clearer, I'm, I'm not going to quibble. It's not too bad. And just like the original, it uses a 10-digit Mantissa, two-digit exponent. Eh, good enough for Australia. Now, because the functionality is absolutely identical on these, you can have a look for yourself. There's absolutely no differences whatsoever. I presume that they would have used the same ASIC. But have a look. Let's do 69 factorial, which is the most you can get in a 99-digit uh, exponent. It's a heck of a lot quicker. So whether or not they're using the same ASIC and just up in the speed, or they they just rolled a new one, perhaps. Um, maybe a new pro same ASIC, um, but in new process geometry, maybe. I don't know. But then you'd have to remask and like, eh, I don't know. Maybe they're just overclocking it. Now, if you actually uh, compare the functionality of the uh, Pocket 260 Solar 2 compared to the, like a uh, more full function uh, Casio, then yeah, you're missing a few stuff, which might be important to you. Stuff like, you know, um, base conversion binary octal hex and uh, decimal, uh, stuff like that, and, you know, logical operators and or not, and the X, XOR and all that sort of jazz. But, you know, apart from that, not a huge amount of difference, but it's still got the important stuff like the engineering notation, um, albeit in this particular case, they're actually uh, shift functions, whereas the uh, other Casios either have one or two uh, dedicated keys here, and it doesn't have uh, multiple uh, constants like some of the higher end ones do. It's only got the one basic memory, memory in, memory core. But, you know, for a pocket cow, that's all you want. And it's still got your rectangular to polar, polar to rectangular conversion, still got your um, statistical uh, stuff, uh, permutations and commutations and uh, stuff like that, but it doesn't have like uh, engineering exponents like, you know, milli, micro, mega and uh, nano and all that sort of stuff you might get on a more full function one, but as I said, for a pocket calc, it's still alright. But for me, the drawback of these pocket ones is because a, they've got less keys available, so less dedicated stuff, compared to this Tandy one here, which is almost ideal not quite ideal, but in my case, it is pretty good. It's got the separate engineering keys here, whereas you need the shift functionality over here. Um, it's got the... Im 
you know, this super important inverse key as a uh, primary key here, whereas you have to do shift inverse over here to actually get that. But this one's still not ideal because the other most used key for me is the um, XY uh, register shift, of course. And once again, this is it's XY is still a shift on here, but over here, it's still a shift. Uh, and I use that like, you know, daily. But it does have the uh, squared key here, but doesn't have separate square root. That's a shift function. And you lose a key for the on one here. And, you know, the fractions. I don't want a bloody fraction button. I don't want a degrees, minutes, second button. Unbelievable. And the height button. Don't get me bloody well started on the height button. The most wasted button on any calculator. Unbelievable. Why they still do it, I don't know. Who the hell uses hyperbolics, let alone one that requires a dedicated key with no other shift functionality to it? Unbelievable. But hey, I learned to live with the non-ideal uh, Casio keys a long time ago. Um, but uh, considering that you get it in a pocket size, I'm not complaining. Well, kind of am, but still, I'm okay with it. I sleep at night. So if I was able to change this layout, what would I do? Well, assuming that people want to keep the fraction key, I'll give you that, I'll keep the fraction key. Piss off uh, the degrees, minutes, second key, piss off the hype key, bloody hyperbolics, rubbish. I'd move the XY register swap key onto a dedicated one, the one on X onto a dedicated one. Oh, can we squeeze square root in somewhere? Come on. Oh, you could probably argue that I'd swap the XY for the square root. Yeah, I'd do that. No wackers. But it goes without saying, you're not going to get the fancy pantsy stuff. Like in this uh, particular case, we've got a uh, complex number mode. There it is, real imaginary and everything else. So, yeah, I, like, it, you're not going to get that. And if, but if you want that... You gotta spring for the Casio FX61F because in my opinion, this is the greatest electronics calculator ever made. Um, once again, still not an ideal key layout, but it's got a parallel button. The only other calculator in existence with a parallel button is my own micro calc. Beauty. Look at that. There it is. Parallel. There's two shift functions per key. Had to do that to get it down into the size form factor. Anyway, I'm not here to fanboy over the FX61F, but I'm telling you, you should get one. But they're hideously expensive on eBay now because they don't bloody well make them anymore. And Casio would not return my emails. Don't call humans on the phone. Um, they would not return my emails about uh, reintroducing this and letting me, you know, rebadge it, if that's a possibility. They couldn't even say, nah, bugger off, Dave. It does have... The modes, not sure I can see, there you go, that's a bit hard to, it's a bit how you doing, it's a bit hard to see. One thing it doesn't have is like an engineering mode though, so unfortunately like we can put it into uh, scientific mode for example. Now if you don't know how uh, sci mode works or scientific notation mode, then you go mode 8 and then you select the number of significant digits that you want. So if you want four significant digits, there they are and it always displays your result in scientific notation. So if we go 8 divided by 9, for example, 8.889 times 10 to the power of minus 1. But, yeah. unfortunately, it doesn't have engineering mode, so if we want to go to engineering uh, notation, we have to uh, press um, shift eng to actually get that. So, it's yeah, it's got scientific mode, but not engineering notation mode. Bit of a bummer, but that's all right. Or if you simply want to fix your number of digits, then you can go mode 7 and three like that to fix your number of decimal places and it doesn't display in scientific notation unlike it doesn't force it into scientific notation anyway so if we do eight divided by nine again we get that instead of times ten to the minus one and yes for all you calculator forensics fanboys who want to know if potentially the two processes in these are the same i'll link to uh, the rs key uh, website down below for the calculator forensics, it's been uh, dubbed, which is a sequence of operations you can do on a calculator, and then there's a huge database of results to see if uh, two, uh, potentially two calculators share, share the same uh, chipset. So what it is, is 9, sine, cos, 10, arc, 10, arc, cos, arc, sine, and that's our result there. We'll do it on the... Uh, Original one, ta-da, they're different. 
their different chipsets. They changed it. Why? Potentially, maybe, so that they could do the no-fraction version. I don't know if they ever had a no-fraction, an NF model version of this original one, but they're definitely using different chipsets because we've got a fundamentally different result. But the good news is the new Solar 2 is actually better because it's closer to 9. Uh, the ideal calculator would take you back to 9. It's just uh, doing these sequences operations just shows up um, an accumulation of uh, like the decimal point calculation system, the floating point calculation system inside the chipset as you build them up and you're supposed to be able to reverse the process and get back to precisely 9, but we don't. Well, check it out. This is very interesting. The FX61F gives exactly the same result as the FX260 Solar, and so does um, this mysterious Casio over here. Gives exactly the same result. Yes, there is a, um, <laughs> a couple of um, segments missing there. So the new Casio is obviously using a new chipset or a new you know algorithm in the chipset that uh, does that calculation. But as I said, it is better. But it's interesting that these three here are exactly the same. And for those curious to know, yes, it is different again on the uh, new FX991EX. Once again, a closer result down to 9 down there. But uh, yeah, very different. So it's uh, not even though like it's in the new style, it's brand spanking. Both of these are pretty much brand spanking new, but clearly using different algorithms. And both of these are 100% solar powered. Uh, I think it's 50 lux is this spec. We might have to check that. Anyway, the old one fades out pretty quickly. Look at that. The new one actually stays there quite some time. In fact, I can keep going. Look, 69 factorial. Still, still doing the hard yards. Look at that. Oh, it's starting to fade now. 69. Come on, you can do it. Oh, lost it. But it came back. And because it's only solar powered, uh, that's why the on key is here, even though like you lose a key to that basically, there's no other shift uh, functionality on it either. It's basically like a hard reset key, because sometimes you might see like random segments that might power up weird, or power down weird, and then power back up weird, um, and get weird segments on the uh, LCD. You just can't predict when the voltage on your chip is just like going, like just draining, draining, uh, you know, away very slow. You can't predict what's going to happen there. And it obviously doesn't have that greater uh, reset circuitry built in. You don't want an extra capacitor. Jeez, no. God, this costs an extra cent. Quarter of a cent. Tenth of a cent. Deci cent. So let's whip this bad boy open and we'll compare it to the old model one. Have I torn down the old one before? I'm not sure. Anyway, let's see. What we expect is all membrane uh, construction chip directly on membrane. Don't expect a uh, PCB. I think I've done a teardown of the 991EX, uh, haven't I? I don't even recall what's in that. Anyway, um, Casio are the absolute masters of uh, low-cost calculator construction. Absolutely no doubt. So let's get inside this bad boy. Come on. Oh, this new bloody fangled case. Gotta to, gotta to pry it off, do I? It's my only good fingernail. There we go. We're in like Flynn, hang on. There we go. No! We have a PCB! Made a fool out of me. It's not all membrane construction. Maybe like a lot of the old school ones, they actually Casio transitioned over to uh, the membrane construction, presumably because it was uh, cheaper and simpler, but they seem to have come back to, um, well, you know, it's not going to be a high quality, uh, you know, fiberglass in there, but, uh, you know, it's probably the cheapest one they can get. But um, anyway, that's fascinating. They've gone back to a uh, good old um, fiberglass PCB for that. Lots of test points on here. It's all chip on board, of course. There's basically nothing else. It's got the solar cell on there, and uh, that's about all she wrote. And, yep, they've heat staked it down. Bugger. But we do have a couple of uh, passive caps on here, which is rather interesting. Check it out. And there's one unpopulated. That's interesting. Hmm. Anyway, let's open up the original. All right, let's lift it off. Got your more traditional case. Ta-da! Yep. Oh, Sanyo. There you go. Oh, 
genuine Sanyo solar cell for those playing along at home. But this is the interesting part. You noted um, before that it actually um, restored its charge longer when you covered up the uh, solar cell, but the pre the old version has a big electrolytic cap on there, um, and it still couldn't do the business. So is the newer chip like much lower power, uh, perhaps? And interestingly, uh, we don't have we've got two um, ceramic caps over here and nothing else by the uh, looks of it, whereas this one. It's got all these different caps in here. Why is it so? I don't know. Anyway, it looks like we're uh, talking uh, 9090 vintage, are we? And this one looks like it's uh, 47th week 17. So, it's got, still got that new calculator smell. Ooh, reset. I'll tell you what, if I short those two pads out, it doesn't <laughs> damn well reset it. Am I going to the wrong one? I'm going to positive. Obviously got to do it to ground. Oh, oh, my poor. Yep, got it. So sorry uh, for all you keypad membrane fanboys, but I'm not going to uh, drill out the heat stakes in there. This is the only one I got. I want to preserve it. It's not that exciting anyway, um, but you can see uh, the evolutionary difference in there. You can definitely see the uh, size in the actual uh, difference in size of the case there. It's just, you know, the big plastic uh, surround, which kind of makes it, uh, you know, almost equivalent uh, in height size. But it hasn't uh, changed a lot in, what, over uh, 25 years or whatever it is um, that this one's been out, I, th I think, anyway. So, yeah, it's interesting. I just expected all membrane construction, but PCB, great. No wackers. And by the way, yes, it does feel like a, well, flexible brick dunny. I'm putting a lot of torsional force onto that thing, and, and it, it's just handling that hunky-dory. It feels a little bit better than the original. The original one feels like it's going to, with the just the split case like that, feels like it's going to snap. Whereas they've, uh, you know, you probably saw the uh, rigid mouldings inside that case in there, and it, it's, you know, it's just a bit more rugged than the original. I like it. Okay, let's test the solar cell, see where it switches on. I'm down at 10 lux here. It might look very bright on camera, but my camera's really gained up here. And uh, as you can see, neither of them turn on at 10 lux. So let's uh, let's up the ante there a bit. 20 odd lux. Hey, look, it's starting to turn on. You saw it? Yeah, look, it's starting to turn on. Oh, barely, barely, but it's, yeah, look, it's it's on. It's on 69 factorial. Where is it? There we go, it works at 20 lux. So it does just work. Oh, not really, but uh, the new Solar 2 is a beauty. If we take that up to 30 lux, then uh, now we're talking, now we're talking, it's still, the LCD is still not nearly as uh, bright on the old one, but it does work. So, no wackers. Oh, come on. Oh, slow as a wet week. Oh, barely. Look, oh, I'd used all the juice to do that calculation. You saw that? <laughs> wow. Wow. Look at it. It's just, it's sucking all the juice out of it. And it, oh, it's just going to fade up. <laughs> Beautiful. I think you're probably, I think the spec is about 50 lux or something like that. But it easily operates under that. And even down at 20 lux, look, we can get rid of that. And it, it still, you know, it still stays there reasonably well. It's not too shabby at all. So that's the Casio FX260 Solar 2, and that gets a big thumbs up. And also Casio, a big thumbs up for making a, an upgrade to a classic calculator. They've kept it absolutely identical but they've just uh, improved the display. They've made it faster. It's more higher uh, contrast. It's more tolerant to interruptions in the solar cell. And it's just a huge overall improvement. I love it. Um, there's Apart from the white, I mean, you know, you may not like the white, but apart from that, I mean, or, like the keys are all right. They've changed over to the plastic ones, but I, I think they're just fine. It's an absolute winner. And if you know of a another pocket scientific size uh, calculator like this, let us know. Yes, there are ones like the um, Swiss Micros one, which um, emulates the original uh, Hewlett Packard 15C, uh, for example. Um, what, might have to do a teardown of that one. 
thumbs up if you want to tear down the Swiss micros. Mmm. RPN for the RPN fanboys, double size enter key. But yeah, I don't use this as a daily uh, calc. I much prefer my Casios, and it's got, and they didn't upgrade it to that VPRAM rubbish, visually perfect algebraic method. They kept the original algebraic operating system in this thing, algebraic, uh, traditional algebraic Casio sequence. I love it. I love this thing. And for like nine bucks US. Geez, do yourself a favour. Pick up half a dozen of them. Throw them around the lab. No worries. Catch you next time.